Wow, what wonderful remarks, and what an impressive and awesome uh, individual Bob Fournier is, and of course, with the help of Marilyn Glenn. Uh, uh, such an inspiring person and very much of a role model for our faculty, staff, and students. Uh, thank you very, very much for your remarks, and they really, uh, really uh, come close to, to our hearts. Well, a century of people and progress. At the end, it's about people, actually, that make the progress. Progress occurs because of people, individuals. We've had an exciting long day. To close the evening, I will now be recognizing some very special people, alumni, students, staff, and faculty. This is going to be relatively long because we do have so many amazing people of the School of Chemical Engineering, so please bear with me. First, we recognized two students this afternoon with the Centennial Student Awards. For the Undergraduate Student Award is the new $100,000 endowment that we have created, all raised this year from the school's very generous alumni. This, this endowment will give us $5,000 per year and we awarded this today with the help of Jim Shore, who was really quite a force in raising the funding for this uh, uh, endowment, to Keith Kroll. Keith Kroll is here this evening with his younger brother, Kevin. So Keith, please stand up to be recognized. The second Centennial Student Award we gave is to a graduate student this afternoon, and it, was, it is intended now for an incoming graduate student. And this endowment you've had for three years, as I mentioned in the remarks in the atrium, but I know all of you were not there, so I'll just repeat a few words. So this was given to us a $200,000 endowment by an anonymous donor. We expect this was a person who got a graduate degree from our, from our school came to us about three years ago, so you don't even know who to thank, actually, for it, because it just came and with no trace, so it's truly anonymous. So this year, then, the Centennial Committee decided that why don't we just simply say that we make this now a Centennial Graduate Fellowship. So we live forever, and it will be uh, then used for an incoming graduate student. So, so this endowment is going to give $3,000 annually in addition to the regular $26,000 stipend that we give to all our graduate students. And the inaugural recipient of this Centennial Graduate Fellowship is Caleb Miskin, who we awarded this afternoon, and who's here with his wife, Lindsay. So, Caleb, please rise to be recognized. <laughs> this morning, from 8 to 12.30, PM, up just about 30 minutes before we started the one o'clock events, we had our fall Industrial Advisory Council meeting. We call it the IAC now. This previously used to be called the New Directions Industrial Advisory Council. We just changed the name, shortened it a few years ago. It was a great meeting. It's wonderful to have all these involved industrial partners, many of them whom are, who are our alumni, who represent major corporations of this country and international corporations, in fact. So, this Industrial Advisory Council currently is chaired by Rick Roberts, who's senior vice president for manufacturing, Chevron Phillips Company, Phillips Chemical Company, who's here with his wife, DL. I'd like to give a big thank you to Rick and to all our corporate partners. All the Industrial Advisory Council members, please rise and be recognized. Thank you, thank you very much for your support. That really means a lot to us so our students can interact with you and get real experience that they will have when they join industry. We had great centennial lectures and panels this afternoon. What can we say about the lectures? They were just remarkable and very, very, uh, very impressive. So I'd like to recognize the centennial lecturers first. Professor Nicholas Pepis, Bob Wiest, who's here with his wife Sally, and Paul Orifice, who could not be here uh, in person, but then he delivers lecture by Skype. And this is all marvels of modern technology. So Nicholas and Bob, please stand to be recognized.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Nobody could have done, I think, a lecture of the, of the history of our school uh, better than what Nicholas did. Thank you, Nicholas, for all your effort. And I want those postcards, by the way, that you were showing. Yeah. <laughs> there were 12 panelists for the three panels. Those panels, again, were industry, academia, and entrepreneurship. All panelists, please rise to be recognized. Now, moderating the panels were three of my very distinguished faculty colleagues, Rakesh Agrawal, here with his wife, Manju, Ramki Ramkrishna, here with his wife, Geeta, and Rex Reclitis with his wife, Janine, I think. There. All three moderators, please rise to be recognized. Now these folks will be rising more than once, it turns out, because I've got a few other things about them. <laughs> so we'll get some exercise, you see, after all this big food you've had. Um, over the last hundred years, our school has had about, as was mentioned by Laura, she had the accurate count, I would say approximately 10,000 graduates. She had the right number, 10,279, something like that. And of which about 8,000 are living. Now, there are alumni recognitions for high achievements that are given by the school, the college, and the university. So I'd like to recognize some individuals there. So the Outstanding Chemical Engineer Award, which is called OCHE, is awarded by the school. We give, we award about two to three such recognitions per year. All those who are the OCHEs, please rise to be recognized. There are a whole bunch of them here. Now, at the college level are distinguished engineering alumni, and there are about 10 or so per year. Now, all those who are DEAs, please rise to be recognized. I think there's about a dozen or more here. Then at the university level are honorary doctorates, which is the highest recognition the university will award. I think there are about six or seven honorary doctorate recipients here from the School of Chemical Engineering. All those recipients, please rise to be recognized. <laughs> the earliest alumnus who's present here this evening is Donald Goodman. He's bachelor's in chemical engineering 1948, 1938, 38. Don was born in Lafayette, Indiana, here, and he had an illustrious career, eventually becoming the mill manager for the Sorg Paper Company in Middletown, Ohio, and now lives in Naples, Florida. I see him and meet him every spring when we go to the Naples President's Council meeting. <laughs> Don is here this evening with his two daughters, Barbara Elseroth and Mary Kersina, who frequently come with him to the events that we have at the university here. Barbara and Mary, thank you very much for bringing your dad to these events. It means a lot to us. I want to now recognize a very specific person who is a model school alumnus for his creative ideas and leadership in making the school better. And this has, he has been doing for more than 25 years. Many, many ideas like the addition to the building, new building, the Industrial Advisory Council, how to raise funds for these things are all coming from this one individual, and he is a great individual who continually is thinking about how to make the School of Chemical Engineering better. I'm speaking here about Jim Shore, who's here this evening with his wife, Jane, for his visionary leadership, deep loyalty, and extraordinary service to the school and the university. The school awarded Jim the school's 
only centennial award in February 2011 this year in Naples when we kicked off the celebration for the centennial and the dinner. Jim, please rise to be recognized. Next, I wanted to mention a certain remarkable fact, but this I think has been already mentioned in the various remarks. Some of my remarks were actually taken away from me by, <laughs> by uh, the previous speakers, particularly Miranda and uh, uh, Dean Leah Jamison. And this, this particular statistic had to do with the student trustees and the fact that we've had these 24 years in a row now, 23 right now, and will be one more year for Miranda, and with uh, Tim McGinley, for 20 years, and then 16 of those as the chair of the board, and then Tyler Teichel and then Miranda, who's now serving, and the fact that we actually go back even further to Rusty Cox, who was the very first one as uh, Leah Gibbons, the very first student trustee was from the School of Chemical Engineering. And there are some in between too, by the way. So now, Joe Petney had actually done a little uh, quick calculation in saying that, okay, so to have two student trustees in a row from a given school, when there are 70,000 students in the Purdue system, what's kind of the odds if there's no correlation between the two events? But of course, there is actually a correlation because there are students at the School of Chemical Engineering. There is a correlation. But, but if there is no correlation, the odds would be about one in five billion, right, Joe? Yes. One in five billion. So you see, so one in five billion, and that's the odds. But so, so what can we say? We have remarkable students who do all these things. As I mentioned in introducing Bob Forney, a major turning point for our school occurred in 2004 with building the addition and renaming the old CMET building and the addition as the Forney Hall of Chemical Engineering. And this was in recognition of Bob and Marilyn Forney who gave the lead gift of $10 million for the total 19.5 million that was needed for the addition that was all raised from private sources, private from alumni and foundations corporations where the alumni were on the board of directors. This whole amount of sum money was raised by a committee that was called, very appropriately, CHE, for chemical engineering, Champions of Excellence. What a remarkable way to describe CHE as Champions of Excellence. This fundraising committee, the campaign committee, was chaired by Don Orr, who's here with his wife, Nancy. Then the fundraising for the renovation of the CMET building began and some 10 million was raised for the renovation in about the period 2004 to 2010. We completed all that fundraising last October and declared victory with this. The second campaign committee was chaired by Dick Hazelton, who's here with his wife, Mary Lou. With the facilities in Forney Hall, we are, have among the very best in the entire world of facilities in any school of chemical engineering in the whole world. And these have helped us to attract outstanding faculty and students. All members of both the capital campaign committees, please rise to be recognized. I've talked about the Centennial Planning Committee, which is all this is planning over the last 20 months. So I would like to recognize them here. So those members who are all the 13 members, I'm one of them, so I guess I'm already standing, but the other 12, all please stand to be recognized. You've done a great job, and I'm really very, very pleased with all this turnout. out. Thank you so much. So please rise to be recognized, the Centennial Planning Committee members. Thank you, thank you. In all our 100 years, there have been only 10 heads of our school, starting with Harry Creighton Peffer, who founded the school in 1911, and I am the 10th head. There are three other heads of the school who are present this evening. Bob Greencorn, the sixth head, who was during 67 to 73, Ron Andres, the eighth head, 81 to 87, 
and Rex Rectitis, the ninth head from 1987 to 2003. Bob, Ron, and Rex, please rise to be recognized for this service. There are only few of these such people, so only four of us know what it takes to run a school, and we have a camaraderie. We know what it takes, and they have all done such outstanding jobs before me that have such great examples to follow what they have done. Thank you, thank you for your vision and leadership. The faculty of our school is a distinguished group. It's a mix of younger and experienced professors. The school now has 29 faculty members, along with two visiting professors, who have long-term, three-year term appointments. This is the largest number in the history of our school so far, in the, all the 100 years. Over these 100 years, the longest service has been provided by three faculty members, who each of them have served the school for 42 years each. 42. 42% of the entire history they have experienced, these three individuals, teaching on the faculty. Say their names now. Neil Howes and Bob Hanneman, both who have been here continuously since 1969, and Bob Squares, who served during 62 to 2004, and he's now Professor Emeritus. Neil and Bob are here, along with their spouses, Cindy Claus and Eleanor Hanneman. Neil and Bob, please rise to be recognized. Our school has some very outstanding faculty who are very outstanding and excellent teachers. We have one individual who has received our outstanding school teacher of the year award for undergraduate teaching seven times. In fact, previously the rules were that, this, that you can receive this award every, you have to only skip one year and make it two. After I joined here, I saw this was really on a roll that, that we would just not have any other faculty who could be recognized with the outstanding teaching. So then we changed the rule to say it's every four years then that you receive this award. But this didn't stop this person. He received his every four years then. <laughs> and uh, I'm now speaking about Nick Delgas, who's here with his wife, Betty. Nick, please stand to be recognized. On our school's faculty, as Leah Jamieson mentioned, there are six members of the National Academy of Engineering. This is the highest honor that is bestowed on an, on an engineer in the US. Rakesh Agrawal, Sankte Kim, Byron Pipes, Ramki Ram Krishna, Rex Reclitis, and Jeff Sirola. With this high count of NA members, we are in the top two or three schools of chemical engineering in the United States who have these many National Academy of Engineering members. I believe that all except Jeff Sirola are here today. All of these members, please rise to be recognized. <laughs> Last one, of course, is the one that already Leah mentioned. This has to do with the National Medal of Technology and Innovation, as Leah mentioned, and we have mentioned a few times already Rakesh Agrawal was named as one of the five recipients, so he was already mentioned by, by, uh, by um, Leah, so I will not say that, but we are so very proud, obviously, Rakesh, of your achievements, and thank you for being such a great role model. <laughs> uh, he stood up so many times that I, we didn't ask him to stand up this time. Now we're getting towards the end. I must thank one person who has worked tirelessly since we started the centennial planning in February 2010. She has done numerous tasks. The first was to organize all and to enumerate all the tasks that had to be done. <laughs> this is the first job to do, so decide just exactly what, how many things there are. So you can then see when to do what and make a plan. 
In fact, there were a total of 95 tasks identified, 95 actually. Each of them had a timeline, when it has to start, when it has to finish, and who's doing, who's responsible for what, all of these, 95. These, these go from sending invitation, designing invitation, writing the drafts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, ordering flowers, all these things. She did all of this very cheerfully, without ever a complaint, and always with a smile. Christina Farmas, administrative director for our school. Christine. Christina, we could not have done this without you. This would not have happened. And she's here with her husband, Radu Farmas. I, of course, cannot close this evening without introducing and thanking my wife, Karen, <clears throat> for her support <laughs> as we planned the school centennial celebration. In fact, we celebrated our 40th anniversary this August. Thank you, thank you. Now, finally, to our morning, we will have a pregame breakfast in the Hanson Atrium at 8 a.m., so we need to close quickly. And uh, these will be followed by Forney Hall and Discovery Park tours. Then there is the football game with Minnesota at 12 noon. Now, as I said earlier, one thing is certain. We may not have too many things, but we have hope on our side. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I close by thanking each and every one of you for being a part of our school centennial celebration. With your help and support, we are recognized throughout the world as a producer of well-educated chemical engineers who have become leaders in all walks of life and also for conducting field-defining research. These 100 years are just a beginning. The School of Chemical Engineering will forever be strong. Thank you for your participation and support. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and have a good evening.